your <laughs> episode, I guess, of the Spines with Wines book club. This month we're talking about Winter by Marissa Meyer, which is really exciting because it's the conclusion to the Lunar Chronicles. Um, and as always, I am joined by ladies. Hi, I'm Melissa. And are we showing our wines now? I can't remember. Yay. Well, yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, um, I'm drinking a pink yellowtail Moscato. You can tell. You can see it. Um, I picked it because it was the only wine in my house that looked a little bit wintry. And it's pink and pretty, and so it was winter. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm Cassie. Uh, I actually found this great moon and star themed wine at the store called uh, Clear Night Riesling, so I had to buy it because it's the Lunar Chronicles and that seemed really appropriate. And uh, it's got fruity notes and there's a big freaking apple on the cover of this book, so it seemed right. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish that they would have had that at my liquor store because I also found a moon flavored wine. But, unfortunately, Riesling's my favorite, but I had to, like, sacrifice and go with a blend of Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio, and it's Luna de Luna, so it's also, like, a lunar. I don't know if you can see, like, the moon sticker. Yeah, I can. It's pretty. It's actually, like, a, like one of those, like, raised, like, shiny moon stickers. It looks like it's kind of on the label. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it now. Like a yeah. So... We'll see how I like this. Hopefully I will, because I hate Chardonnay, but it's a blend. So. It's moon Chardonnay, though. It's probably delicious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good so, point. What, here, um, so, Kathy, do you want to tell us a little brief synopsis? Oh, actually, before we go into the synopsis, we'll just say we are a book club that drinks wine while we talk about these books, and you should do the same if you are 21 years or older and able to legally drink. So, yes. Yeah. Kathy, with the synopsis. <laughs> okay, uh, so The Lunar Chronicles is four books, and they're science fiction, fractured fairy tales, and so the fourth and last book dealt with winter, which is actually based on Snow White, and it tied everything up really nicely, and uh, if you like science fiction or fractured fairy tales or the moon, you know, there's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of moon way. stuff this book. There is. Um, so, we've all read the other books in the Lunar Chronicles. There have been four other ones, including the prequel. Um, do you think that this was a fitting ending for the Lunar Chronicles? There will be spoilers here, so hopefully you've read this already. You've had a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was. It tied up every loose end. So I think, I mean, every little thing was accounted for. Um, I like that it wasn't just, they defeated her, that was it. it. There was still, like, a good, like, 50 page worth of, like, explanation of what happened afterwards and, like, what was going to happen, which I really liked. Um, I felt completely satisfied, which I don't usually feel. Yeah, uh, I agree. There's nothing worse than, like, being invested in, um, a series for so long and then the last book is terrible, which has happened more times than I can count. The fact that this one was satisfying and it concluded everything to like my heart's content made me so happy. <laughs> I completely agree. I thought that it was a really, really fitting ending. I had I was a little bit worried because I did not like the prequel book that came out, um, but I really, really loved Winter and I was just amazed at how quickly I flew through it, even though it was so very long. Um, <laughs> And, yeah, I felt like they they went through everything, and I there was so much that I liked about it and so much that I liked about the characters, but I feel like I'll get into that a little bit later instead of, like, piling them all on now. <laughs> Before we start going through, like, all of our discussion points, we also wanted to let everyone know who's watching that we are going to be monitoring the hashtag Spines with Wines. So if you've read Winter and you have any questions, you can go ahead and tweet it at us and we'll see it and we will talk about whatever you said on air. Um, so, oh, so as I just mentioned, the book was oh, 800 and, what was it, 823 pages. Okay. It was like, <laughs> super, super long. Like, more than double the amount of pages of any other book in the series. Oh, yeah. 
Um, so did you guys feel like it was that long while you were reading it, or what were your feelings? I didn't think so. I mean, when I first picked it up and I noticed that the pages were super thin, I was like, okay, this this is going to take a while. But then I ended up reading, like, probably 600 pages in one sitting, which seems like a lot. And I guess under normal circumstances it would be, but, I mean, it just flew by. It was nonstop action. You know, there were no, like, draggy filler points. Like, everything had, a, like, a purpose, and it was just, like, one thing after another after another. So I never felt bored or draggy. Um, it definitely flew by for me. Yeah, uh, I agree. Like there were, I'd be look up and I'd be like, wow, I read 100 pages. That must have taken, what, 20 minutes? And then, you know, an hour had gone by and I had no idea because it was just so engrossing and there was so much happening and there was romance and action and adventure and I was just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. I was like so pleased with it. I was so surprised because first I was like, all right, this seems like way too many pages to let us know what's going on. Like, obviously, you know, we did want it to tie everything up, but I didn't want it to just drag out for the sake of being a long ending. Um, but yeah, like you guys said, I I think like, first I was like, how on earth am I going to read this by the time we have book club? <laughs> because I was like cutting it very close. But um, <laughs> as soon as I started, I would like I would be reading for like the day and then uh, like a work day, so basically on my commute. And then at the end, I would be like, "Oh wow, I read like 200 pages." So this is actually like a doable thing. And yeah. I think that, like Melissa said, if there was constantly like action, and there was just so much that was going on that um, it felt very quickly, quickly paced. I thought that she did a really good job with the pacing. Definitely. Um. The next discussion question that we have is one of Cassie's. That just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> she said, on a scale of 1 to 10, how Hunger Games do you think the ending of this book was? Uh, probably like a 9. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when like all the lunar people were wearing eerily similar costumes to what yeah. you would find. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely think there are some similarities. But, you know, at the same time, that's, that's a story archetype. So it's not like the Hunger Games invented that. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, yeah, definite similarities, but also differences. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd go seven, probably because Mockingjay Part 2 is coming out, and, like, they're going to go spoilers for Mockingjay Part 2, and they're going to travel through the capital, and everyone's dressed insanely, and, like, I felt like the whole last Book of Winter was them traveling through all these crazy, not districts, but sectors, Right, but that definitely. felt very Hunger Games that they were traveling through those, so. Yeah. And then, like you said, everyone dressed all crazy at all the events and stuff. It was like a butterfly outfit is totally normal right. to wear to a Queen's coronation, so. Of course. Yes. Yeah, I felt that way, too. Like, any time that they were um, talking about the coronation and just showing, like, the high society lunars, I was like, whoa, this is so weird. And I was just picturing that scene, like, um, in Catching Fire when... Katniss and Peeta are at, um, they're in the Capitol, and they're having that party, and Plutarch is, like, leading them around and showing them the drink that they can use to, like, make themselves sick if they want to continue eating. Yeah. And I was just, like, picturing their outfits and stuff, and I was like, this is so weird. Like, it is so similar. Right? And the lunar people are not, like, they're not, like, bad people. They just don't know any better because they've been, you know, that's their society, and they're not necessarily bad people. They're just... Ignorant. They for a war, and they think it's really funny. But, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and speaking of the lunar people, um, obviously we had Queen Lavana, who was the most evil of all evil people, like, ever. <laughs> but um, do you think that her plan to assassinate, assassinate Kai after they got married would have worked? Or, like, do you think that there's no possible way that she could control everyone on Earth and everyone on Luna? On Luna? What do you think? Um, I feel like it might have been possible, you know, if she if she became like sole empress and was able to assassinate all the world leaders. I mean, I feel like it it's possible, but I mean, I feel like she was her eyes were bigger than her stomach because <laughs> Earth was huge and that's a lot to eat and take over, and no one has done it in the past. So I doubt some queen who's never lived on Earth would have like, a really big fighting chance. 
I think as far as evil plans go, it was like a little shoddy because there's a point where Kai is like, oh, well, she can't just show up to Earth and take over Earth. There's too many people. So why would her becoming Empress kind of change anything about that? I found that a little strange, but that was like my one nitpick out of everything. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was wondering about that because she does talk about, well, Cinder talks about how there's only so many people that Lavana can control, and while she can control a lot of people, she can't control everyone on Luna. Right. Um, I feel like she would have to be within a certain range to be able to do that, so even if she was sending, like, the, I can never say the name, but, like, Thermitages or... Thermitage, that's what I call them. Yeah. <laughs> even if she was sending them to Earth to try to, like, round everyone up, they still wouldn't necessarily still be, like, under her control. Right. And I think that Earth is not necessarily used to being ruled in that kind of sense. So, the, like, the numbers are just, I think, too much for the Earthens to just accept this and, like, kind of go with it. I don't know. Um, and so now, speaking of Lavana's gift, um, and all of the Lunar's gifts, do you think that there is anything that would be, like, any kind of use for their gift that would be beneficial to Earth in any way, or do you think that the device that um, that they were talking about at the end of the book needs to be used on everyone in order to prevent any mind control or anything like that. I mean, I think the idea of mind control itself is rooted in evil. Um, so I don't really see a benefit unless it was... I don't know. I mean, there's. I just feel like people need to make their own decisions, good or bad, and telling someone what to do, even if it's like, you know, don't hurt that person, don't hurt this girl, or whatever. I mean, it's just, they're still going to do what they want eventually. You can't control them their entire lives. So I don't really see, like, a positive point unless you're, like, a supervillain. <laughs> see, I was imagining some sort of, like, I don't know, lunar exchange program where, like, young lunars could come to Earth and maybe be, like, I don't know, police officers or something, and they could, like, stop people from, like, committing suicide or, like, robbing people or something. Temporary. Then you'd have to have a really good vetting process to, like, make sure you're not letting any, like, evil lunars on Earth. Because, you know. That tip. You don't want to let them all in. Yeah. I'll Which take some more bad. Like, especially if you look at all of the past incidences that Cinder had talked about, like, different things that had happened when different lunars had been on Earth. Um, like yeah. Jessica yeah. Jones. All it took was one guy. That one is company. exactly what I was just going to say. <laughs> I didn't say sorry about Syrian refugees, but, you know, Jessica Jones. Yeah. <laughs> One man. It's, I mean, it's direct mind control, so I feel like it's very relevant. Yeah. Did, did you both of you watch Jessica Jones already? Yeah. No. Okay, so then we can't spoil anything oh, for Jessica, but you will I, I hosted Thanksgiving. Well. I did not have time. Andrew and I marathoned the entire thing in two days because we were like, we cannot let anyone spoil this for us. But I still managed to have two things. So. I feel like if you didn't watch it, like, I feel like the most, the majority of it was spoiled, like, in that very early beginning period, and now it's kind of been, like, there hasn't been too much about it, but everybody that was, like, overexcited about it got everything out online that yeah. last Friday. <laughs> um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, so, okay, so now just, like, looking at the book as a whole, there is obviously a lot that went into creating this series. Do you think that Marissa Meyer, um, do you think that her strengths lie with the world building in the book, or do you think that they lie more with the character development? Ooh, that's a toss-up. I mean, I could picture the world very clearly. Um, I liked the world that she built, but... I would probably say the characters were stronger, I guess, because there were some points of the world that I, like, forgot about until she mentioned it again. Like, the whole cyborgs being discriminated against, I completely forgot. There was, like, a whole thing because Cinder was, like, literally years ago. But, um, because, like, some of her points are really good, but she didn't always bring them up again and again, which is normal. Um, so you kind of forgot. But I definitely think her characters were the strong points. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, I think when we came around to, they were talking about all the world leaders, and I was like, oh, I don't think I understand how Earth is now structured in this world. Right. But I do know who all these characters are, and I, I do love all of them for different reasons. Like, I could remember them so clearly, despite, you know, that huge break between books three and four, but 
when I was like, oh, what are, what is, like, how is Earth sectioned off in this series? Like, I have no idea. So I have to go, uh, character building. I would definitely have to do the same. I think that, um, I think that that's why I cared about the series so much, and I think that, like, initially, I was so hooked with Cinder because I loved her character and I loved her story with Prince Kai. And then when I read the second book, Scarlet, I <gasps> didn't really care that much about her and Wolf. I did grow to like them more as, like, the books went on, but the second book, I was really just like, all right, well, that was just not as good as the first. And then the third one, I was like, okay, I really like Crest. I really like Thorn, so I'm, like, into this again. But then the last one, like, when I got to see more of all of those people, that's what really, like, made me love it. And I think that if I didn't have that, like, initial love for Cinder and Kai, I might not necessarily have continued the series after Scarlet because I really, like, was not feeling that one. Um, and even, like, even the prequel story. I mean, I read that because... I was like, well, I want to know everything that's going on in it and have that background information, and I hated it, like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I never read it. But I just, I was like, you know what, I'll just read it because there might be something that's pertinent to the rest of it, and I think that if I didn't care about about those characters, then I wouldn't have cared about reading those books. Yeah, so, I didn't read it, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's going to make one of these questions very difficult for you. <laughs> <laughs> The next one, actually, actually, no, no, sorry, not the next one. Actually, the next question is, speaking of characters, since obviously that's where all of us think that the most, like, the biggest draw of the book is, who were your favorite characters and your least favorite characters in the series? Ooh, okay, favorite characters? Hmm, I would probably have to say Cinder and Thorn. Not together, obviously, but... Separately, I would hope not. <laughs> Least favorite characters, um, Scarlet, <laughs> and I guess I'll have to say Wolf. You really like Scarlet and Wolf less than Lavana. Oh, are we counting them as like? Yeah, but she's like a viable option. Fun evil. <laughs> That, you just like evil people, you say. I them. do. I really love all the evil people. <laughs> Wait, I guess I'll take evil. <laughs> They're so unnecessarily evil. It's just like, who's like that? I don't know. It's great. <laughs> um, um, okay, if I didn't choose from like those people, then I would probably say anyone. Project Amory. Because he seemed just creepy and gross. Yeah, that is a good one. I really, really disliked him. Yeah, he was he was pretty vile. And he had no like no reason to be the way that he was. No, know? there were none. Like, and there were no redeemable characteristics. Like, there was a point, like, Levon is horrible, but I felt, like, a little bit of pity for her when I found out about, like, the burn situation and, like, how bad her sister was. I was like, dude, that sucks. Like, that's probably why you're such a bitch. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to curse. You but. find out a lot more about that in Ferris, but... Figured. It didn't make me like her more. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> make her any more sympathetic. You're just like, oh, well, that's terrible, but... Yeah, but and it was like, so you know, you're an adult now, and you should be able to recognize that that is wrong, and you should, you know, be able to do good yeah. things. She was psychotic for real. So. Yeah. I think it's such a shame, because she had so much potential. Like, they talked about in Ferris a lot how she was very interested in the government and, like, different things that they could do to try to benefit Luna, and she just got so incredibly power-hungry that she turned into who she is which is horrible, but she really initially was much more interested in the politics than her sister was. Right. But, hy uh, hypothetical here, if she had never tried to kill Cinder, Princess Celine, who knows what she would have ended up like raised on Luna. She could have been, you know, a power-hungry monster too. Maybe she's only a good person because she was raised on Earth by good people. Oh, nature versus nurture. Yeah. <laughs> Although she was not necessarily raised by the best people on Earth either. Yeah, I mean, she like, could have been a girl who were not yeah. going to her. She didn't have a good stuff. Everyone would like, you've been racist against me and my cyborg arms and legs, you know, and just, she could have been, like, really bitter. Mm -hmm. And she had a really horrible life, so she could have easily gone, like, the villain route. Like, that's believable, too. Um, Cassie, who were your favorite and least favorite characters? Uh, Thorn, number one. Two, I, I liked Winter. She's, like, kind of kooky and crazy. Um, 
I also, as much as I like how evil Levon is, I did not like Amory because he was just so like, ugh. Like, I oh, know. I want you to marry me, and I'm well, going to punish a guy for because you love him. Like, that was, like, ugh, you're the worst. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I guess he's my only, my only bottom, really. I mean, I didn't love Scarlet and Wolf, but I didn't, I didn't hate them. Mm -hmm. They, like I said, they definitely, like, grew on me a lot more as it went on. In their yeah. book, didn't like them. Even yeah, it was rougher in Scarlet to, like, draw. Maybe because Cinder and Kai were so great, it was so hard to make an attachment to them. I don't know. It was. It maybe. was. Um, sorry, I'm just checking the hashtag on Twitter to see if we have anything. Yeah, I got that. I'm on top of it. <laughs> oh, good. Um, never mind then. Um, so no. my, <laughs> my favorite. Um, I definitely liked Thorn as number one. He was definitely, definitely my favorite. And um, also Cress was, like, tied for number one just because she was so, like, she was just so cool. She spent her whole life, like, secluded, and she's, like, not used to people, so it's very weird for her to be, like, integrating, but she's super smart and super tech-savvy, which is obviously extremely helpful, and I thought that, like, even though she had no, like, upbringing and... Like, she's somebody that really might not have been able to tell wrong from right with the way that she was brought up, unlike Lavana. But then when push came to shove with certain things, like, she was willing to sacrifice herself for this cause instead of, you know, like, taking the easy way out and, and going to Wolf's mother's house. Right. Um, and then for least favorite, um, Lavana and Amory. I really just don't like them. Um, I know, like, there is... I guess whatever with her with Lavana's sister, I just really like. It just does not make me feel bad for her. I just don't like her, and I just don't <sighs> like. She knows that everything that she's doing is so horrible. She's forcing this man into getting married to her. She's just controlling all of these people to get what she wants, and she is constantly worried about how she looks. And she just like there's like nothing about her that I like at all. You don't think that's kind of sad though that like there's nothing in her life. That's good. Like, no one loves her for who she is. And, well, it's because yeah. she did it to herself. You're right. Yeah, I, I honestly feel like she, um, like, she could have potentially been happy, but she just kind of chose never to be satisfied with anything. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, in sticking with characters, who were your favorite couple and your least favorite couple? Ooh. Hmm. Before Cress, I would have said Kai and Cinder. Mm -hmm. But I really love Cress and Thorn. <laughs> I see Leia in the background. Do you? Your... Oh, yeah, she's just chilling on my table. <laughs> um, yeah, I really love Cress and Thorn. I love Thorn. And I like them together. It was. It felt really romantic and cute, you know? Like, I don't know, I just really like them. Uh, least favorite couple... It's hard. It's hard. I mean, I guess I'm, it would be a toss-up. I don't even think it's, like, the least favorite between, like, Wolf and Scarlet and Jason and Winter, but I still love both of them, too. Mm -hmm. But if I had to choose, I guess, them. Which one? <laughs> um, it's a toss-up. <laughs> I'll probably say I'd so pick them, but I'm not going to choose. Scarlet and Wolf, because I honestly <laughs> forgot how they even got together. <laughs> um, I gotta go Cress and Thorn again, because I love that they're polar opposite. She's, like, uh -huh. cute and shy, and, you know, kind of unsure of herself, and he's, like, you know, super sure of himself, like, Mr. Lady's Man. I thought they were uh -huh. so cute. And then again, I just, Scarlet and Wolf, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. I mean, it was cute that she had zero reservations that he was a hideous wolf monster, but... He might have been hot. You're right. Well, he was never told to me whether he was a hot wolf monster. So. I like werewolves sometimes, okay? <laughs> the fact she's like, I still love you because it's what's inside. I don't care if, if you have a deformed wolf monster body. He could have looked like <laughs> Richie. That's all I'm saying. He could have been what? He could have looked like Big Dick Richie. You know he was a werewolf. True blood. <laughs> Yeah. So from Magic Mike. I, I guess werewolves just don't do it for me, you know? Me either. I hate werewolves. <laughs> wow, so, I'm alone in my werewolf love over here. <laughs> so hairy and 
Yeah, Harry. The scene rips open. It's just no. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, before I talk about my takes on the different ships in the book, I am like kicking myself because one of my favorite characters that I completely forgot to say is actually Iko or Iko or however you say oh, I love her. <laughs> yeah. She's just so funny. Yeah, she's like, hilarious. I think one of my favorite moments in the whole book was when her and Cress had the chess match and Cress wins and she's like I, I'm a computer, like, I'm not supposed to do right. this. <laughs> like, but I'm a computer. <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny, and she's just, like, it's funny that she's so boy crazy, and, like, I just really liked her personality, even though yeah. she was a computer. Like, she was just so much fun. And she had so much more personality to me than someone like Lavana, who's an actual human, supposedly. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so, so couple-wise... I definitely would say that Cress and Thorne were my favorite couple. I think that they were super adorable. Um, and while Scarlet and Wolf are some of my least favorite characters, I would not say that they were my least favorite couple. I, I thought that their romance was really cute. Um, I really liked how every single every single ship within the book is different. Like. You have Jason and Winter who represent like childhood love, and then you have like Cinder and Kai, who is that Cinderella story, and then there is Scarlet and Wolf, who seem like they I feel like they seem like they loved each other the most of anyone, um, even though their love was probably one of the newest. Um, okay. yeah. I would have to say least favorite couple would be Lavana and Kai. Hey! Uh, <laughs> because they technically, like, I mean, despite them not having feelings for each other, they were pulled yeah. They were married. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, they would be my least favorite. But I, like, I, really, I was genuinely interested in every single ship, and I also really loved that not one of them was a love triangle, because I right. feel like it was rare in YA. A lot of, like, pretty much every book has love triangles, which I can't stand, and this not only had no love triangle, but it had, like, four really strong relationships with no love triangle, um, so I just really, really enjoyed the way that was done. Also, you knew where they were all going to end up, so there was no, like, picking sides, and you weren't right. disappointed at the end, because you knew who was going to end up with who. It wasn't like, you know, exactly. Yell went off and cried because he was all alone. <laughs> but, so, speaking of that, um, the book was, like, very intense. It was 800 pages of action and like high stress scenes and different things where you didn't necessarily know what was going to happen. But did you ever feel like the characters were in, um, were like very threatened and like you weren't sure what their fate was going to be? Or did you always feel like you knew that at the end everyone was going to be okay? Um, I kind of knew everyone was going to be okay. But there was a moment when they got sick. When Winter and then Scarlet got sick too, and then Wolf had changed, and I was like, "Are they both going to just kind of die or what?" Um, for like half a moment, and then when like Cress was stabbed, mm. but I, you know, I knew Cinder had that artificial heart because they mentioned it like 20 pages before that. So I didn't, I would, I didn't really sit. I didn't have like real danger. I wasn't like, "Oh my God, they're not gonna make it," you know. So. Yeah, I'd like to say I thought the stakes were high, but they weren't. I was like, oh, blah, 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 got kidnapped. Oh, blah, 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 got... Oh, they're going to be fine. Everyone's going to live happily ever after. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I felt the same way. Like, I thought that everything was really exciting, but I never really was like, oh, my God, something's going to happen. I was more just like, oh, my God, how are they going to get out of this or how are they going to overcome this obstacle? Right. Um... I think part of that is probably because they're based on fairy tales, and typically fairy tales end with a happily ever after, so I don't know if maybe that's why there was always this undertone of, like, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And speaking of that, did you guys think that that was a good ending? Like, were you happy that everyone lived happily ever after, or do you feel like there should have been more turmoil on their journey to, like, where they got um, no, I love happy endings. I'm a romantic, so a great happy ending works for me 100%. <laughs> Usually I think they're cop-outs, 
Like, if, e like, everyone lived, everyone, but I kind of liked it here. Like, it kind of made my sad little shriveled heart feel really good, so. That's how I felt. I approved. What? I was going to say, I approved. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I was, like, I was surprised because I also usually feel like, like, especially with a revolution that big, like, it just really seemed very unrealistic that um, none of them would be lost in the battle. Um, and I think that it's, like, it's very inspiring that they all made it through because they have their different strengths and they were all able to get there happily ever after. Um, but I think that if something like this were to actually happen, that wouldn't be the case. So it was, no. I felt very, like, torn about it. Like, I was happy because I wanted everyone to be happy, but I was also, like, it just doesn't seem like it could have happened because of everything that they had gone through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. It, like, it was, it was good. It was just, at the end, I was just kind of like, okay, I'm just, I'm really glad that we're going to be getting an epilogue in the um, short story book that's coming out. Oh, next wow. week. Yeah. I, didn't know that. I think it's called Stars Above. Uh, it comes out in, I want to say, February of twenty twenty one, And um, it collects some of the little short stories, and then there's going to be an extra, like, epilogue, too, so we'll get to find out more of what happens oh. with the different characters, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Hope they all have babies. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Babies. <laughs> or cubs. Or cubs. Oh. <laughs> oh, those are going to be the ugliest babies. Oh, now I'm just thinking about, like, Twilight. And okay, no. What? <laughs> Who's going to no. fall in love with the werewolf baby? <laughs> <laughs> one of the guards is going to fall in love with... Who's that guard? The guard who switched sides is going to fall in love with one of the werewolf babies. I really, like, I really wanted more of the ending, and I feel like there is definite potential to... To have more, just because everything that Cinder talked about doing at the end, like, that is not something that seems like it would be a smooth transition with oh. dissolving the um, the monarchy and moving over to a republic. I just can't picture, like, the citizens of Luna being okay with that. Yeah. Guys, I'm going to interject real quick, because we got a question. Oh! Okay, um, so David Rashner on Twitter asks, which fairy tale adapted to science fiction the best? I'm assuming out of all the books in the Lunar Chronicles. Oh. Well, that's hard. It's a good one. Um, Thank you, David. <laughs> I would probably say... Why it took me so long to look at my phone? <laughs> I would probably say Cinder Cinders, mm -hmm. just because I had, you know the wicked stepmother and stepsister the whole time. She lost her foot. He brought it back at the very end. Um, she ended up being, I mean, like, I don't know. It's hard to say because I feel like Scarlet and Wolf, like, obviously it was Red Riding Hood and the Wolf, but it also at the end kind of felt like Beauty and the Beast-ish, especially since he's now a beast. Mm -hmm. um, and Winter, I loved how she was Snow White and then, you know, fell, like, was asleep in the suspension tank, and then he kissed her. Like, that was cool. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I would have to say Cinders. Uh, I'm going to go Winner, just because it felt... Like, there were so many points where I was like, oh, and they brought, like, the apples, like, you know, yeah, eating apple cool. treats in, and like you said, the suspension tank was, like, the glass coffin, and, you know, this is going to spoil a further question, but, like, you know, the, the other members of the team were, like, the seven dwarves, and he kissed her awake, and obviously Levana is the evil stepmother, so that felt like the most full uh, sci-fi tale to me. Yeah, I would agree. I would also say Winter. Um, and another thing, like, how Levana came and tricked her into eating the chocolate instead of the apple. Yeah. Wasn't it an apple dessert? It was a sour <laughs> apple petite. Yeah. Oh, I just, I don't know why I thought it was chocolate. <laughs> it was because um, it had a candy shell. Yes, okay, that's what I was One thinking. of them was crap. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, I was probably just really hungry for chocolate myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that the winter story was, was adapted the best. Um, I also really loved how um, everyone in the kingdom loved her, and she was really fairest of them all because yeah. she was nice to everyone. She refused to use her gift. Like she was genuinely at heart a good person, no matter how detrimental it was to herself. 
gifts and she was going insane from not using her gift. Like, she still just didn't want to inflict it upon anyone because, like she said, every single person that has used it has thought that they were doing a good thing. And she would never want to miss, like, have a misconception about what she's doing. And even if she thinks it's good, it might not be good for someone else. So you really can't, like, be responsible for making choices for other people. Right. Good question. Um, okay, so speaking of Cinder and her um, her little fairy tale going on there, um, Adri and Pearl, they had a much more happy ever after than um, any of the evil stepsisters and stepmother did in Cinderella. Uh, why do you think Marissa Meyer did that, and were you happy with the outcome of their story? Um, I don't know why she did that. It seems like she likes happy endings, and that would extend to, you know, they were kind of villains in the first book, so without outright killing them, because I feel like she's not the type that would. Um, was I happy with it? I was just kind of like, whatever. Like, I could care less about them. I mean, I think it would have been more fitting if they were, like, servants, you know, just kind of like that would be fun, like, you know, ever after, how they turned out to be servants in that one movie, like, that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, what does, like, Drew Barrymore's character say? She's like, bestow upon them the same kindness they bestowed upon me, and then they became, like, servants. So I think that would have been cool and fair. But, you know, she also proved that, you know, Sunder took the, the high end, the, the upper hand, and, you know, she did good despite years of cruel treatment. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of cool, but it just felt very happy and glossy. Uh, the only reason I think she did that was to be like, look how just and fair Cinder is. Like, these people were terrible to her and ruined her life, but she still, you know, didn't have uh, their eyes picked up by crows. Like, in, Or was it a... I can't remember which fairy tale. There was one with the, the stepmother and the sister's get their eyes picked out by crows, and there's another one where they have to dance in um, hot cold shoes till they that die. Snow White. That one's Snow White. Which one was Snow White? The dancing on hot coals. Dancing on hot coals, so, you know, it was, you know, her first step is queen. She's being kind of, you know, a caring, you know, person, despite the fact that these people, you know, were so mm -hmm. cruel to her, but she's proving that she's, you know, more kind and just. That's the only reason I think she would do that. I think, um... Like, Cinderella is known for being kind, so I feel like that was part of it. But I also feel like um, there was just so much, so many other things that were so much more important going on that I almost felt like she she did it to prove that, like, kind of no matter what situation you might be in, it might seem like the worst thing in the world, but there are other things that are bigger and, and it require more attention. Like... Like, they just seemed so insignificant at that point. Like, it felt like Cinder just didn't even care what happened to them. Like, because they're just, they just mean nothing. Like, she was able to turn her life around and overcome Levana and, you know, do what she wanted to do. And she didn't necessarily have to do it at the expense of someone else. Which I liked. Yeah. Um, okay, so... What was the moment that made you laugh the most, cry the most? Melissa, we'll expect an answer for you from that one. <laughs> <laughs> and what moment, like, had you on the edge of your seat the most? So, sorry, three questions in one. <laughs> laugh the most, I mean, out of just this book or, like, the whole series? Uh, just this book. Okay, just this book. I mean, it would probably have to be some kind of Ico moment. Because everything with her just was funny. I think her existence was for the comedic relief in the book. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember a specific part that made me just like put the book down and like die of laughter. Which does happen, but I did not do that in this book, really. I mean, it was like a chuckle to myself. You know? Um, as far as crying went, I cried like a few times because I'm me. Um, probably, <laughs> probably like, so with emotion. you know, I, I cry when, like, things come really happy and when they're sad, obviously. Um, the most was probably, hmm, it's a good, it's a good point. I guess I would say, 
I think I liked it when like Cress and Thorn finally got together. I was real happy. Like when they finally were just like professing their love. Definitely teared up then. But I also teared up when Cinder died. Like right at that moment. And like Kai came in and then I was just and then like, you know, she was fading away. Like I definitely cried a lot then because it was over. And then what was the third one? Um, the moment that had you like the most on the edge of your seat. Um, probably like that whole scene when Levana was controlling all their friends and having Thorn like stab and you know all that kind of stuff. Um, I feel like I'm at an unfair advantage because I wrote these. Uh, <laughs> so the scene that made me laugh the most is actually um, so after winter winter uh, after sorry I've been drinking. Uh, after Cinder jumps into the lake and they bring her back to like an aristocrat's house that they broke into, they're like trying to figure out how to get the water out of her body because she's like oh, not on rice. Rice. And Thorn is like, why don't we just put rice in her head? Yeah, like, that was oh, funny. That was, that was hilarious. hilarious. So hard. She's like, we're not putting rice in my head. <laughs> that really, I know so much. I wrote it down. Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, that was my favorite part, laughter wise. Um. I teared up when, um, near the end, when Cinder brought up Peony, her um, dead stepsister from the first book. And she's like, oh, Peony won't get to see me crowned, and, you know, she won't get to wear beautiful dresses and visit me on the moon. And that, like, that's the only time I got teary-eyed the whole book. I was like, oh, I remember Peony. She was great. Um, and then I guess the moment I was the most edge of my seat uh, was when they were fighting uh, Winter and, what did you call us? Ja Jackin, Jason, whatever his name is, um, and Scarlet and Wolf are all fighting him, and he keeps like controlling them, and like Scarlet sneaking up behind him. I was like, oh, she's gonna stab him with a knife. This is gonna be great. But then you know, Winter. he takes over. That was just crazy. It's like there's so much going on. I was like, this guy's gotta die. And then Winter just flips her shit and has Scarlet stab him like a bajillion times. Yeah, that was great. I love that. And she felt terrible because she used this horrible gift to, like, have Scarlet stab someone to a pulp. And she also hadn't used her gift in so long that it was, like, painful to her. But I kind of love that scene. Um, for me, I would have to say, like, now that you reminded me of the rice scene, that was, like... <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> definitely mine, too. Before that, I was going to say the one that I said earlier about Echo, like, her mind is being blown that Crest beat her at Tress because she's supposed to be the best at, at things like that. Um, but yeah, Thorn, like time and time again, Thorn is usually the one that makes me laugh the most. Him and Iko are like kind of tied for that. Um, and for something that made me cry, I actually didn't cry at all while I was reading this. Shocking. Uh, what? <laughs> what is it me? <laughs> Shocking. Oh, I know. I know, because I don't really cry that much when I re read books, but or it's very selective and weird, I don't know why, but it just didn't happen this time. Um, but one of the moments that I did think was the saddest was, like Cassie said, when Peony was mentioned, because um, her and Scarlet's grandmother were really the only two like major deaths that we experienced throughout the series, but um, having known Cinder the longest, Peony seems the most, like, personal and the one that affected me the most. Um, so yeah, I'd have to say that. And then, um, but also, you know what, I really liked, this obviously, like I said, didn't make me cry, but um, it really was like touching when Scarlett was explaining to Winter why she believed her, like because of her grandmother. She said, you know, everybody always thought that she was a little bit off and that she was crazy, but obviously she wasn't, and she knew what she was doing. Um, so she put that same faith in Winter that other people hadn't put in her grandmother. So I just thought that was, like, very heartwarming. Yeah, um, that was sweet. Yeah. And then for the moment that had me on the edge of my seat the most, I think I was, like, most stressed out during all of the moments with Lavana and Kai because I was, like, you know, she knows that he is not into this and she could just kill him like at any second and she needed to go through that coronation so he had a little bit of time there but I was just worried that like nothing was going to pan out in time and like the video wasn't going to get played and she might 
get rid of him the second that she was named Empress of Earth because she really had no need for him after that. Um, and then there's all of these other innocent people that are just stuck in there. And that just is really stressful to me. Like, um, I, Melissa and I had talked about earlier, but with all of, like, the terrible things that have been happening in the world, like, all the terrorist attacks and everything, like, what happened in Paris, like, I've been very, I feel like I've been very on edge with things like that. So I just, like, it's very hard for me to not think about all of those innocent people that had nothing to do with anything, never asked for this in their life, but everything for them, like, is affected. So it's just, like, I felt like that was, like, very, just, like, stressful and intense for me. Just, like, wondering what all of these people that, whose stories I wasn't invested in, like, what was going to happen to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of them had to die the way they were describing the battle scenes. It was just yeah, like, so yeah. Blood. Yeah. Blood. yeah. Friends killing friends. And pretty, yeah, pretty intense. They're, like, mm -hmm. bloody in their own throats and, you know, God, yeah. it, was, it was pretty violent. More intense than the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last book, at least. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so do you think, like, throughout the whole series, do you think that there would be any potential to have this story told on screen since, you know, series like the Hunger Games have gotten their, their golden screen adaptation? I don't know. I feel like it would come across like, cheesy, because they use a lot of bad effects. I mean, the whole point of, like, the Lunars are, like, they're crazy glamours. And I feel like it, it could be really cheesy, the way they do that. But, I don't know. It'd be cool to see, but it would need, like, a really big budget to be successful. Yeah, it would need, like, um like a movie, like, a blockbuster movie budget, but, like, with the time of, like, a TV show, I feel yeah. like. Also... Uh, world, if you're going to adapt this, please keep Cinder, uh, I'm sorry, make uh, Winter not white like she's in the book. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Hollywood would be like, yeah, it's a white Snow White, let's go. She's Snow White. Right. Also, Kai, like, like, he's, that. Isn't, yes. he rules in Asia somewhere. It's so. Cinder too, right? Yeah. I just assumed that all of them were Asian. Were Asian. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. But, you know, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I um, I don't know how I would feel about it being adapted, because I think, like, a lot, of, a lot of fairy tale retellings have been done a lot, and, like, it's hard to sometimes separate fairy tales just from Disney, because Disney has such a monopoly on everything in that sense. Like, we have Once Upon a Time, and um, so I, I would worry that people would be like, oh, this is going to be too much like Once Upon a Time. Um, but I like I think that it would be interesting, and I, would, I wouldn't I would be... Like, if it ever was made into a movie, I would be there opening night, of course, because yeah. I want to see it. But I just, like, I'm not sure how it would be done. And I, they would have to split, like, maybe... I mean, it would have to be at least five... No, it would have to be at least six movies, because figure they gave, like, one movie for each book, including the prequel, but then split the last one into two movies because that's the trend, and also it's just too big to fit everything into. Yeah, for once, it would actually work, unlike Twilight. <laughs> right. <laughs> or The Hobbit. <laughs> or The Hobbit. Yeah. Maybe it would be better as, like, a made-for-TV series. Like a 10... Like a mini-series? Like a 10-episode type thing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like The Tenth Kingdom? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking! <laughs> <laughs> Which is my favorite. <laughs> I love the Tenth Kingdom, but I want everyone to love it too. I know you're the one that made me watch it, and you but like I, like, it. I do love it. So yeah, love it. It's the best. Cassie, you need to watch it immediately. What is it? It's called the Tenth Kingdom. Okay. And it's, it's like a fairy tale type thing. There's a lot of fairy tales. I'm not gonna spoil it because you need to watch it. But it's okay. so good. You love it. It's in like New York City, right? Yeah. I'm remembering part of it. It's like really like poor effects. But it's really great. <laughs> it's like the 90s, you know. But it's so good and heartwarming and amazing and funny and just great. And you'll cry. It was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. But I feel like it probably is. Yeah. I mean, you could find it anywhere, I'm sure. But um, So, would, like, ranking the books, what are your, what's your, like, final ranking now that you know the entire story? 
Well, okay, I'm not going to include Fairest since I didn't read it. Um, what is it, like Crest, Winter, Cinder, Scarlet? Mm -hmm. Okay, I would probably have to say Cinder. Because that's your, one, first, your number one? That's my number one. Well, hard to say. <laughs> I mean, it's the first one I read, and I'm very, like, nostalgic and loyal to, like, original things. I mean, the first Terminator is my favorite. So, I yeah, really... The first one... Two. Two. Don't even, we're not even going to go there, Cassie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Terminator 2, Terminator 1, the rest don't count. I'm going to talk about this right now. <laughs> um, I just really loved it so much. But I also really loved Cress. Me too. Okay, I'm going to go, it's hard, because, but Cress wouldn't be Cress without Cinder. Okay, final ranking. Cinder, Cress, Winter, Scarlet. But I really love Winter. Like, I almost want to put it above Cress. That's, that's, that's my final ranking. I really hate my ranking. That's my final ranking. Chris is going to hate my ranking so much. Okay, Why? number one, Winter. Perfect. Perfect book. Number two, you're gonna hate this. Ferris. I really loved Ferris. Oh, I loved how he was fun with it. Not I read that book in a day, like nonstop. Then Chris. No, wait, no, no, no. Wait. Okay. <laughs> it goes Winter, Ferris, Cinder, the book that started it off. Then Chris, because I loved Chris, but it started off a little slow. And then least favorite, Scarlet, because I had so much trouble with Scarlet and Wolf. That's my ranking. I'm so sorry, Kristen. <laughs> That's okay. You're entitled to your own opinion. Um, <laughs> I, for my ranking, I would have to say first is Cinder. Um, second would be Winter. Third would be Cress. Fourth would be Scarlet. And last would be Ferris. Because you I hated Ferris. Ferris more than Scarlet? I <laughs> did. I really did. <laughs> She's so like, evil and great. She's so oh, great. She's so she evil. Evil and annoying. I oh, loved how evil she was. <laughs> I, you know what? I also felt like they showed me in a lot of the earlier books how evil she was, mm -hmm. and um, there was like I felt like there was one piece of information in Ferris that was very important. Um, that being that Lavana had created the disease that was killing all of the Earthens, and she had been doing this biological warfare like off the bat. Um, like, I felt like that was important, but other than that, I felt like I didn't really get anything new. Like, I already knew that I didn't like Lavana. I already knew that she was evil. I didn't need to read another 200 pages about how evil she is. Like, I got, I get it. <laughs> Scott, I, read it. <laughs> I was like, I already know the ending. Like, sometimes I can't read prequels because they bore me, and I know the ending. Yeah. Her her little love story with the guard was sick, and, you know, she had a very horrible family life, but she still did terrible things, and she did terrible things as a child, too. It wasn't like, it wasn't like some of these things were what changed her and made her evil. Like, she was intrinsically evil. Yeah. Wait, I can't remember. Did she kill her husband? He just died. Did he kill himself? I can't remember now. I can't remember either. The whole time I was reading Winter, I was like, right, but what happened to Winter's dad? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I know the mom died during childbirth. Spoilers, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't remember what happened to the husband, who she loved more than anything, allegedly. Enough to force him into a marriage with her <laughs> and make him be unhappy. Dang. So overall, would you guys recommend this series to anyone who is looking for something to read, or would oh. you steer them in another direction? <laughs> Without a doubt, I'd recommend it. <laughs> Leia in your corner is so funny. I'm sorry. Get down from there. Get down from there. <laughs> he was just, like, staring at the screen. Like, <laughs> 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 just like this creature just hanging out. Hey, Cat, look over here. <laughs> She's deaf, Cassie. She can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. 
Um, I would recommend this to anyone who loves fractured fairy tales, even if you don't like sci-fi. I'm not a huge sci-fi person, but this was great. Real sci-fi. I read it, and even if you find Scarlet to be frustrating, just keep going. It gets better. It gets better, guys. Just keep going. You know, I didn't hate Scarlet as much as all of you guys. Like, I wasn't the hugest fan, but I wasn't like, ugh, like, I want to give the series up. Like, I don't understand this incredible animosity you guys harbor towards it. I mean, I just it found so it so frustrating because I wanted to read about Cinder and Kai and not these, yeah. like, hoodie girl and wolf man. Like, oh. Yeah, that's I mean, that's kind of annoying. I right? wonder, um, I wonder if maybe that's why we have such hard feelings towards Scarlet, but then we're more open to Crest because we knew to expect new characters. Right, um, like, we had no idea when we started that they were going to go back to Cinder. Like, we just thought it was this new, you know, book. We were just told it was a retelling of Red Riding Hood, so I was anticipating this brand new thing, and I was excited when they showed up, but it was still like, no, get back to them. Get back to the important people. Yeah, yeah. like, I always felt like, okay, their story is sort of interesting, I guess, but I would much rather know what Cinder's doing right now. Yeah. So. Would you recommend it? Um, I would. I think that it would depend upon the person. Like, I think that there are a lot of people that would enjoy it, but I feel like I do know some people who wouldn't be as into it, and I wouldn't. I would know not to recommend it to them because usually, I, like, usually you can get a feel for what people are gonna like and what people aren't gonna like. Um, so I think like. Like you said, I think that anybody that enjoys fairy tales would definitely enjoy the story, um, and not necessarily sci-fi. They would definitely enjoy it, even if that wasn't their thing. Um, but I think that there are some people that would would think that it was too too YA for them, which I'm not one of those people because I love YA. But <laughs> I didn't think it was that YA. I mean, I've read some truly bad YA where I'm like, ugh, like I can't even get through this. Like, I never, I mean, you know, the whole, like, okay, they weren't having sex, obviously, they're just making out, like, that's, like, the one. You're injured. You couldn't have sex when you're injured. Whatever. The wolf you're monster. Ooh. So. <laughs> that's that's the main difference to me between, like, You want to read that, uh, that epilogue? What? You want to read that epilogue of Scarlet and Wolf's, uh, wedding night? Yeah, I <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> You Where can write human loving. <laughs> There's that whole website. I should write it myself. Write Wattpad. You can start a Wattpad account and write Lunar Chronicles fan fiction. <laughs> I would love to do that. I'd read it. I'll be like my new erotica genre. <laughs> <laughs> um, so overall, how many stars did you guys give Winter on Goodreads? Um, I haven't done that yet, but when I do, I'll probably give it four out of five. Four and a half out of five. Gotta go five. I um I rounded up. I did, I gave it five out of five, but I would probably give it four and a half. Well, four point five out of five in yeah. real life, but that's not an option on Goodreads. <laughs> well, yeah, my I'm probably five out of five too. <laughs> hey, petition to Goodreads half stars. Come on, they really need to. Great, yeah. too much. There's sometimes you're like, well, it wasn't a three, but it wasn't a four. Right. It wasn't a four, but it wasn't a five. It's true. Not Goodreads. Um, okay, so that was our winter book club. We hope that you guys enjoyed it. And next month we are hopefully going to be better about telling you when we're going to be posting the live show earlier on. But we, it's like, you know, Thanksgiving, so we have some family stuff, and it's hard to coordinate during this time, so hopefully you understand that. But um, we have already chosen our book for the next club, and we would love that if you guys read along with us. And that book is going to be Winter Spell by Claire Legrand. Um, I have been really looking forward to reading this. I was planning on reading it last month, and it didn't happen. So I was really excited when I suggested it, and everyone said okay. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone who doesn't know, it is a YA retelling of The Nutcracker. Um, I listened to a podcast with Claire Legrand recently, and it just got me so excited for this book, and it feels like the perfect thing to read in December. And um, it's actually on sale on Book Outlet, 
the hardcover for four dollars, and I think that it's still in stock. I know Melissa and Cassie. They were like a hundred of them. It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. They both ordered them on Black Friday, so um, you can do the same if you want to read it for cheap. So yeah. Do you guys have anything else to add? Nope. I highly recommend drinking wine out of the bottle. <laughs> You've been watching, but I'm not a fan of cups. Uh, too much, uh, you know, filling up my dishwasher. So that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we will see you guys next month, and like I said, we will try to tell you with more advance notice when our live show is going to be, and hopefully we will see you then. Kristen, where can we find you on the internet? Oh, we could do that too. Yes, <laughs> um, you can find me on YouTube. <laughs> This video will actually be on my YouTube channel, um, which is Super Space Chick, as well as on Twitter and Instagram as Super Space Chick and Goodreads. Um, and I also have a blog where I review lots of books, and that is superspacechick.com. And where can we find you, ladies? You can find me everywhere as Mecca Melissa, and by everywhere I mean Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> and my newly revamped blog, MeccaMelissa.com. Woo. What about you, Cassie? <laughs> uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet, you know, Twitter, Instagram, um, Tumblr, uh, Yerkmonger, Y-R-C-H-M-O-N-G-E-R. Um, I also have a book blog with some friends that only I update, <laughs> um, bibliomantics.com, so I post all, you know, the booktube stuff I do with these girls. We have, you know, book trailers, and new book releases, book calls, and all kinds of things. Anything we are in, we got it. Barnes & Noble all the time. What? Your new release section I always take with me to Barnes & Noble. I have it, like, up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't had that in a while, because, you know, nothing comes out, you know, these past two months. But January hits, we'll be back yeah. in that again. Back in business. I also like that you guys have book news in addition to, like, book reviews and stuff, because... It's Mm -hmm. I feel like it's hard to find blogs that are dedicated to just, like, news about books right. instead of, like, everything. Opinions. Like, a trailer hits, we try to cover it. Like, we don't really do casting news too much, but just, like, oh, blah, 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 is being made into a movie or a TV show, so we try to keep on top of that, but there's just so much lately. I feel like I'm not keeping on top of it as it's much as I should. Uh, for those that didn't hear, we all just somehow realized that we missed the news, but A Court of Thorns and Roses got optioned, so that's exciting. Yay, I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure it's great. Wait, oh, what? What? Immediately. Are you kidding me, Cassie? Melissa, do you want me to read Queen of Shadows or not? Yes, get through it this week, and then next week start A Court of Thorns and Roses. Well, first, you I should just stop what we're doing right now and start A Court of Thorns and Roses. No, you need to finish. Someone needs to read Queen of Shadows with me, or I'm never talking to you again. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I need I need to share this pain that I have. I'm gonna I'm gonna be sharing your terrible pain that you seem to want to inflict on us for some horrible reason. Misery loves company. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that was our book club, and we will see you next month with a new one. Bye. Bye. Bye.